Welcome back to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Justin Stoddart. Thrilled to bring onto the show today, Taya DiCarlo. She has grown her business by 253% just in the past two years. Credits much of that to video. Today, we're unlocking the secrets on how you can do that as well in your business. Get over all the things that are keeping you from really succeeding in that space. Before I go there, let me remind you that inside of the Think Bigger Real Estate group on Facebook, it's a mastermind. It's where you get to go deeper on these topics and engage in the conversation, not just be listening. So thrilled to have you in there again. Search Think Bigger Real Estate group on Facebook. Uh, back to today's guest. Taya, what a, a privilege to have you here. Thank you for spending some time with us today on the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Are you kidding me? I'm always humbled and honored when when people ask me to contribute, and uh, that's really what what fills my cup is uh, paying it for. You know, you know, giving people some wisdom that I've acquired. You know, I love that. It was just just recently that um, you were asked by Tom Ferry to be part of his big event. Um, what was the biggest takeaway from that event? Obviously, there were a lot of people that took takeaways from you from that event. But you being on that massive platform, that massive stage, what did you walk away gaining from that? Um, I think that one big thing was I was that much closer to overcoming my uh, imposter syndrome, which uh, many of us encounter in life. Uh, and if you're not familiar, Google it. Imposter syndrome is when you you get success in something. And the first thing you do is go, Oh, well, I'm just lucky. Or, Oh, you know, I, this happened and oh, I'm not really worthy. I'm not really deserving. And being up on stage and being able to share, um, the success that I've accumulated over the last two years specifically was very validating for me. Um, but my biggest takeaway from that event was to go even bigger on video because, it wasn't that long ago that my coach, Jason Pantana, told me in January of 2020, which was not that long ago, he's like, Taya, you need to do a weekly show. You need to start, you know, you sell luxury real estate. Your videos need to emulate the lever of your selling. Um, and so have I did exactly what he told me to do. And look what happened to my business. Um, and so that's where my biggest takeaway was, okay, you're on the right track. You need to scale. You need to get more organized and you need to go even bigger on video, meaning I'm just going to keep being consistent. And uh, my next big venture, my objective for 2022 is YouTube. Amazing. Um, let me go back to an area that I think everybody has faced at some point. Who am I to be on video, right? Who am I to be the authority, this imposter syndrome? I want to dig into that a little bit because I think we can talk about the tactics all day long, how to let, like, like how to set up the lighting, how to set up the, you know, the, the technology, that stuff you can figure out really quickly, or like you're going to teach us, you can outsource really quickly, right? Mm -hmm. What keeps people, I think, from even getting to that point, Taya, is the fact that they have this internal narrative that's telling them like, you're not ready for that yet. You're not talented enough. You're not the right person yet. Um, how did that show up? for for you i mean besides being on the big stage right and having that opportunity kind of the super bowl of like real estate trainings to be right. able to be up right kind of doing the deal what what advice would you give to somebody who maybe doesn't have that opportunity to be on that big stage to overcome that imposter syndrome how how, how would you coach somebody through that i would say number 1 you got to know your shit like Are you there, Taya? You broke up just a little bit. So I think what she was saying, feel free to interrupt me if you can hear this, Taya, but you actually have to know what you're talking about, right? Like if you are an imposter, of course, you're going to feel imposter syndrome. <laughs> I think that's pretty, pretty apparent. Um, one thing that I tell people oftentimes, and feel free as soon as your connection re, re, uh, re-stabilizes here, Taya, kind of grab the mic back from me, but um, I think it's like important for us to not just spend time being great marketers, but spending time being great professionals. Like we actually have to be good at what we do. And you can spend 20, 30 years in the business gaining that. Or I think you can just be really diligent and being a student of the game and figuring out how am I going to gain expertise? You don't, you can condense down time. So oftentimes you have people um, who will say, well, you haven't been in the business for 20 years. And that doesn't necessarily matter, right? You think about um, somebody who has learned by being in any number of transactions over any longer period of time. 
Um, and you can say, okay, I'm going to go that route. I'm going to, I'm going to start being an expert 20 years from now, or I'm going to be very diligent at being like a student of people who have been in the business for 20 years. Like I'm going to, I'm going to go seek them out. I'm going to go listen to podcasts like this one and listen to people like Taya who can really teach me how to do this. Um, or I can, um, you know, listen to, uh, people on YouTube again, looking for experience looking for people in your office, looking for people in your community. I think you can be very intentional about not being an imposter by just being very, very intentional about learning, about growing, and then about actually doing the business, right? Actually doing the business um, and not just sitting there doing it. Let's get, let's get Taya back. Taya, are you there? Oh my God. How annoying was that? <laughs> I'm so sorry. No problem. Oh. So, so, Hey, I filled in for you here a little bit. You said, like you actually have to know your bleep, right? You actually have to know what you're talking about. And so I, yeah. and, and so I went on a little rant there talking about how oftentimes people will say, well, you got to be in the business for 20 or 25 years, right? No. Or I said, or you can be, and, or you can be very intentional about learning from people that have been in the business for 20, 25 years, right? Like just yeah. spend the time to gain the expertise and then apply it and do it, right? It's, it's, you can actually condense down time by just being a rigorous student and learner and curious, inquisitive professional. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And I think there's a, a common misunderstanding in real estate that like, you don't have to work hard. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like people who get, and I've been coaching the agents on my team recently, they know they need to work hard. Like, I tell them all the time, look, what you need to do right now is you need to know your inventory. If you don't have a deal in the pipeline, you need to go to brokers open. You need to know the inventory. So when you meet the client, you know what you're talking about. The fastest way to overcome imposter syndrome is by soaking up all the knowledge, right? And there's knowledge everywhere. There's Wall Street Journal articles. You can um, engage with Keeping Current Matters. Like you can literally start learning all of these different things in real time and be able to speak to it intelligently. And then you can lean on, like if someone who's, who's not that new or who's new in the business and doesn't have a lot of experience, you can look at the sales from your brokerage. You can rely on those sales and then study the numbers, which is something that the top agents don't even have time to do, by the way. And then all of a sudden you're looking like a pro, your confidence is boosted and it comes through on camera. So if I have somebody listening to this right now, who's saying like, Boy, that sounds great. Like, how do I have time for that? I'm going to be just really honest with people right now. You might need to turn Netflix off a little bit sooner at night or replace some of this for your entertainment uh, habits. And when I say turn off Netflix a little earlier so you can go to bed earlier, so you can get up and spend an hour studying the market. Now, again, this is this is if you want to be a pro, right? This is if you want to be a pro. Like, you start to exchange education for or, or sorry, yeah, you get rid of entertainment, reduce entertainment and increase education. Like you said, we have the world at our fingertips of knowledge. There's no shortage of people willing and able and handing you free knowledge to be an expert. It comes down to, like you said, you actually have to work for it. You actually have to be somebody who's willing to pay the price to become that expert. Yeah, because there's there's being good on camera and being a talking head. <laughs> and then there's knowing what you're talking about, right? Yeah. And the power comes into play when you actually know what you're talking about and you can perform in the deal, in the transaction, and in the, the realm of your business. And you can articulate that on camera. Those, those two, you literally get elevated to the next level. But in order to have that confidence, you have to put your reps in. It's like, it's like someone being obese and saying like, I really want to lose a few pounds and I only go to the gym once a month or I only go like even once a week, you tighten everything up. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. People say they want something. I say, don't tell me, show me. I'll believe it when your life and the sacrifices you're willing to make actually reflect the fact that you want it, right? At that point, I'll believe you. Otherwise, it's just, it's hollow words. Um, so good, so good, Taya. Okay, so let's move on now. So we're talking about, um, of course, overcoming imposter syndrome, right? We've given some people some great tips on doing that. Um, next phase, again, you talked about kind of what you took away from this experience of video. Now, you're somebody who does a lot of video and you're saying, I'm gonna double down. I'm gonna do even more, right? Yeah. Um, what's the mentality, the rationale behind that? Like you're kind of like already doing a lot of videos. What, what, um, what causes you to say that? What causes you to, to feel like 
there's a lot more opportunity when it comes to doing video. Uh, because I I can tangibly say that 47% of my business in the last 12 months came from agent referrals through Instagram, 47%. And I've closed $53 million worth of sales in 2021 alone. And That's then amazing. that year prior, that year prior, it was uh, 37 million and 19% came from agent referrals. So from 19% to 47%, mm -hmm. I only started doing Taya's two cents in March of 2020. So that just goes to show like, oh my gosh, 12 months of consistency will change your life. Yeah. Will literally change your life. So for me, I'm like, okay, well now I'm an authority. Now people are watching me. Now people, I, now I have the platform. I, I don't want to let people down. Right. And it's not about ego. It's not about how I look or how I sound or whatever. It's like, how can I deliver more value to people? So they're getting ideas on how they can either grow their business or, or literally make more money. Like my whole thing is like, look, money's not going to solve your problems, but it sure as hell gives you more choices and more options in life. And you can help other people. And I have found that when my clients see me as someone who can help make them more money or expand their portfolio or get them out of a pinch or whatever it's going to be, they lean on me and they trust me there's nothing more satisfying than being like on someone's team to actually be of service. So a couple of key points that I just have to highlight here today is absolutely brilliant. What you just said a couple of things that you just demonstrated. The fact is that, you know, your numbers, right? Professionals, again, going back to this concept, if you, if you want to avoid imposter syndrome, then don't be an imposter, like actually do the work to become a professional. What do professionals do? They know their numbers. You know exactly what your increase was, where your business is coming from, with a little bit of help, this doesn't take a lot of time for you to really get to get clear on where your numbers are coming from, right? The second thing that I that you that you said I absolutely love is it it is going to be a price game moving forward if you don't stand out and bring real value. When you consider yourself as you do as a real estate advisor, and you're a part of somebody's team, and your goal is not just to sell a house but to make them more money than anybody else can to increase their portfolio, it's a different conversation, folks. It really is. It's not like, a, well, this agent and this agent, and who's willing to do it for what price? Because they're both going to do the same things. No, your value proposition is different. When your value proposition is different, price becomes totally irrelevant because your fee gets dwarfed by the value that you bring to the table. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And in the last 24 months, I actually charge more than I ever have. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. And which I used to be so nervous about the conversation around commission. Mm -hmm. And now I will, because I'm coming from this place of abundance and I, I want so badly to hold on to this feeling that I feel right now, because I don't ever want to come from that desperate, like thirsty um, phase that I was in for the vast majority of my career being like, why won't you work with me? And I got to convince you to work with me. No, no, no. Now the people who are coming to me are like, I, do you have time for me? Right. I'm like, yes, I absolutely have time for you. And my fee is X. Right. And instead of questioning me on my fee, they believe in my value. They see me as the expert. Um, and when I ask people, well, we're, you know, you could, you know, everybody in town, why did you choose me? Oh, well, I, you know, I watch your videos and like, I, I really, I hope, you know, I watched the episode about blah, 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 when it comes to commission and you get what you pay for and blah, blah, blah. Like I'm going through it right now with a client about staging. He didn't believe me about staging. And I'm and I told him, I said, look, that's a you don't trust me right now. I, I feel that. And this is where I'm going to educate you on the process. And I said, but I work for you. You're the decision maker. But if you're hiring me, you're hiring the TAYA program. If you don't want the TAYA program, I'm happy to step down. And you can go work for somebody, you know, have somebody else work for you. If this, if we're not in alignment, I'm not going to switch gears and compromise my integrity and in how I do things because you don't trust me. I'd rather step down and have you work with someone else. Right. And in that moment, it was like, oh, wow, she, she's not desperate to keep this deal together. It's like, no, because I know it's going to cost me a lot more time and a lot more money to service this client. Right. Mm -hmm. So now he believes me, we're getting new staging put in. And he actually texted me. He's like, thank you so much for being honest with me. It's like, look, I'm not here to stroke anyone's ego. I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you the truth. That's why you're hiring me. Mm -hmm. And it's that's just a much more powerful mindset um, yeah. to come from, whether it's a $10 million deal or a $500,000 deal. People want the truth. I don't care if someone's going to Nordstrom and buying a pair of skinny jeans, like, you know, who knows if those are even style anymore. You know what I mean? Like you <laughs> want the salesperson to give you the truth <laughs> always. So I, I've got to, I've got to point something else out here that, that I think was, was, um, 
Absolutely fabulous. So, so think about this. And again, this is going back to the point of validating video and why people need to be doing more of it. Taya, if you had the ability to have a listing appointment that extended over several months and prior to them ever signing the contract, you were able to just teach them everything that you know, like it would be really hard for them to not say no to you or sorry, for them to say no to you because right. they're like, she knows so much, right? And typically in a listing appointment, you've got what, maybe an hour to like prove yourself that I'm the right person for the job. Right. What video gives you the ability to do is to have months, if not years of demonstrating the fact that Taya knows what she's talking about, right? Of building that authority over time. Whereas nobody has the ability to go spend four months with someone to convince them that they should be the person that gets the, you know, that, that gets the listing on their home. But through video, you have the ability to leverage the fact and literally clone yourself all over the internet where these people have the ability to watch you on their time and get confident with the fact that you're the person so that when you have those conversations saying, look, if you want Taya, you get Taya's program. And right. they know what Taya's program is. They've been experiencing it for the past X number of months. How many videos? We don't know. Absolutely. But that's why I believe a good part of that is why you're able to be so strong and say, no, no, this is the way we're going to do it. You hired me for a reason. This is the way that it goes, right? You hired me, not vice versa. And, and I, I just think that video plays so much into that because if you were a stranger who they met 20 minutes ago, even got a referral from a friend, it's like, well, I don't know if she's right or not. I think it should be this way. But because you've demonstrated for so such a long period of time, your expertise, now they they trust, right? Do you know what I tell people now when they, they call me and they say, oh, you know, I've got a friend of mine who's looking to buy or sell and they're interviewing a couple agents. I literally say to them, you know what, before I even go on the meeting, I want you to send them and I share with them my contact card, which has my YouTube and my Twitter and my Instagram and my LinkedIn and everything. And I'm like, look, give this to them. If they are, if, if our personalities don't jive and they think I'm annoying or they think I'm cheesy or whatever they think, I'd rather know upfront that we're not going to be in alignment mm -hmm. and, and we just don't work together. Right. Whereas, and they're like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Because they may meet with three people and we may not be a personality fit. There are some people I will never convince them to, to work with me. And those are the people it's an uphill battle. I'd rather focus on like my, my loyal likers, right? The people who I'm, I'm literally preaching to the choir. And I posted a video on TikTok recently and it, it's gotten like a couple hundred thousand views and people are resharing it and doing um, duets with it because it's resonating with them. And I basically say, look, people are going to talk crap about you, right? You, yeah. you cannot convince everyone to love you, but the people who do love you are going to love you a lot. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be referring you to people. Those are the people you need to, to cater to and stop trying to appease the masses. You're never going to win that battle ever. Um, and people have said to me, well, you know, Atea, like I get it. You're great on video. And like, I'm not you. I'm never, I've had, a, I went to lunch with a top agent. She's arguably one of the top agents in the country. Okay. And she goes, well, you know, that's you. I love watching your videos and I'm a realtor. And she's like, but I'm just not good on video. And I'm like, well, if you actually did it, there's a whole other audience out there for you. Like yeah. my audience is not your audience. Like, and just because I'm good on video doesn't mean you're not good on video. Like, listen, you're good at on a one-on-one -on -one appointment in person. So what if you just put that on camera? Yeah. If people have a limited mind. Are you there, Taya? Oh no, she's teasing us again. She's cutting out. Back, holy shit. This, I'm like leaving you on the edge. But, um, <laughs> but people need to let go of that limited mindset. Like look at Glenda Baker. She's 54 years old. She's a grandmother. She has over half a million followers on TikTok. And that woman already had a successful business platform. And now look at her. She's even more busy. She's getting like everyone in Atlanta, Georgia wants to do business with her. Right yeah. now, if she would have given into the, the, you know, the notion that, you know, she, you know, she just, she's not going to be on camera. Where would her business be? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm in my fifties. Like, like who am I to be on TikTok? Right. Yeah. And now with right. 6 million likes on TikTok, right. 486,000 followers. You're right. It's, it's so much of it is in our head. Like the more that I am around some of the most successful people uh, that, that, that I've ever met. Right. So much of them say that's in your head. I'll ask them, I'll be like, what do you think about this? And they'll be like, that's in your head. That's in your head. That's in your head. I actually did a, an Instagram post this morning where I said, um, people will say to me, Justin, I guess like I already have so much going on. I don't know if it's, I, if I have time for this. 
And I'll get to the bottom of it. Like, what do you mean you don't have time for it? Like, and when I really uncover it, they're like, well, I don't know that I'm as talented as these other people. Like a Taya and a Glenda and all these people. I said, well, number one, they weren't amazingly talented when they started. Go back and look at their first videos, right? Yeah. They weren't overly confident. Like that came with practice. Guess what? Everybody sucks when they start. Be okay with that. Number two, this isn't freaking American Idol, folks. This is not America's Got Talent. You don't have to be celebrity status talented. You have to be number one, knowledgeable, right? And number two, you got to be passionate. People buy energy. They buy your confidence to solve their problems. So quit thinking that this is like a beauty pageant and, a, and, and like I've got to juggle on stage or something. Like get over it. Yeah. This is about real estate. You know real estate. Go be passionate about serving people. Like that's what this is about. I want to hold on to something you just said there. It's It's not a beauty pageant. Look, there are some beautiful men and women in this world who sound like absolute crap and don't know a thing about anything. I don't care how beautiful you are or how sexy your voice is. If you're not giving me value, I zone out. I mean, look, that is the internet. The internet is full of beautiful faces. But if you're not engaged and, and there's nothing in it for you, next, scroll, 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 scroll. The moment, and this is where you know people have asked me like, where do you come up with your content? And I'm like, I give the people what they want, mm -hmm. right? If I get asked a repetitive question all the time, like, is staging really worth it? Is hey, are you there? <laughs> God, I, go. I'm going to start swearing on this podcast. <laughs> I'm, I'm known for dropping a few f bombs. <laughs> oh. Anyway. You're good. So, yeah. So people ask you about staging is where, is where it, it cut. Yeah. So basically like if I get asked a repetitive question where like one of them was like, oh gosh, is staging worth it? I'm like, well, of course that's going to be my next day is two cents video. Right. Yeah. So you have to, whether it's a, a news article online that you disagree with. So maybe the wall street, the wall street journal comes out and says millennials are not buying homes. I would be like, bullshit. They're absolutely buying homes. They're buying homes in droves. Right. And that's the conversation. I, I want people to know the best video that you can make, you need to ask yourself, is this shareable content? Is this something that someone's going to share with their friend and go, oh, you know what? Did you know this? Wow. I didn't know this. Did you, or I agree with this, or I disagree with this, whatever it is, it needs to be shareable. If you're just like, here's me cute sitting somewhere and the caption is just very narcissistic, you can be cute all day long. But if there's nothing in it for your audience, then why are you even putting it out there? Yeah. yeah, you're not a real estate model, right? You are a real estate professional. People hire you not because you're cute, hopefully. They hire you because they are needing your expertise. 100% love it. And I think yeah. you really answered the question here. It was like, where does like where do I come up with content? Right? And you, I think you answered it. Whenever someone asks you a question, if one person has a question, lots of people have that question. So like take answer the question of your client, go sit in your car for your camera, put on your content calendar. This is what I'm going to film next in my video, which is I'm going to answer that question for a lot of people. Cause if one person has it, lots of people have it. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I actually, I send screenshots to my marketing coordinator and I'm like, add this to the list. Um, and in the days where I didn't have a marketing coordinator, I just, you know, use good old notes app on my phone mm -hmm. and I would write, Oh God, that's a good one. And I would just have a laundry list of things. Um, and here's a tip for anyone else who doesn't know the key to having consistent content on the internet is content banking. So I sit down with my videographer once a month and we shoot as many episodes as we can in one day because I sell real estate for a living. I don't just do on camera stuff for a living, right? So I outsource everything to him. So we get in the studio, I have the ideas, I'm the content creator and he is my director right? So he's the one who's like, okay, well then we're going to put it together like this. And we've got the song and we're going to cut it and edit it. And we collaborate together. So at the end, he does the thumbnails for all my, my videos and everything. Mm -hmm. So that way he gets my vision and we really jive well with one another. And um, I don't ever have to worry about what my next piece of content is going to be because we've already banked it for the whole month. I love it. One day a month, folks, one day a month, and something else she said here is she hires a professional. Isn't it interesting how realtors, like the one like acronym they, they probably like the least is like FISBO, yeah. or sell by owner, right? <laughs> People that say, I'm going to do it myself. I can figure this out. Sure, I could pay you, but I don't know that it's worth it. I'm going to do it myself. And then we go do all the crap ourselves, right? We, we try and be our own like video FISBO. Um, 
like, did you have your head around that right away? Or did that take a little bit of time for you to get comfortable saying like, I need to create a budget for this. This oh my is God. important enough that I need to actually hire a pro. It took me five years of denial. <laughs> five years. I mean, I want you guys to listen to this. Five years. In 2015, I posted my first video on Instagram for, for real estate, right? And I would make my videos on the fly or I would just, you know, with my 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 phone and I would go out and I would then prop up my phone with some natural light and and I would make these videos and after a while people were like okay you know like this is great she's making these videos and even it caught the attention of Tom Ferry and Jason Pantana and whatnot but it wasn't until Jason said to me he goes you know your videos are really cute but they're not polished and professional hmm. and you're selling million dollar properties and I was like oh ugh. and he's like when are you going to start spending some real money and when I researched what real money was, so in the beginning, uh, full transparency, I was spending about $2,000 a month and I made a home studio and I had a videographer come to my house and I would upload it to a cloud and he would edit it. So the first like dozen episodes of Taya's Two Cents are not as good as they are now, right? But it was a starting point. Mm -hmm. And after I worked with that guy for a few months, I was like, this was good, but I can do better. And that's when I hired Ricky and I doubled my budget. Right. So yeah. I spend anywhere between four and five thousand dollars a month on video. And go back and tell us the stats again. I, I probably because that decision, because your willingness to spend more in the right areas, folks, not saying just throw throw money away. But when you find something that works, and you're like, I can I can do this. Then you committed more money to it. I mean, it'd be interesting to like calculate the ROI on that, right? Your referral business went from what percent to what percent of your business? There we are. Um, well, I will tell you this. In 2019, mm -hmm. I had zero agent referrals. Wow. Zero. In 2020, 19% of my 37 million came from agent referrals. And in 2021, 47% of my already closed 53 million in sales have come from agent referrals. Almost half of your business, almost half yeah. of your business. And these people are all finding you on video, right? For oh the most God. part. Without a doubt. I mean, there was one client last year, we did $7 million worth of business. She quote unquote said, I watch Taya's two cents every time it's out. Hmm. And I'm like, I told my husband, I was like, look, it's worth it. <laughs> like, right. that, you know, these, and look, one video is not going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that now if I don't post a video for a week, people are like, well, what's, what's next? Like what's going on? Mm -hmm. And some videos are a complete miss, but those miss videos still get 3000 views. My good videos get like 6.2 thousand and that's organic mm -hmm. within one week. It's like crazy. it's crazy. So good. It's so good. Now, how do you balance all this? Right. Let's, let's, People are like, okay, this sounds amazing, but I got a family. Taya probably doesn't have any other responsibilities other than selling real estate and being on video, right? Now I know, like I know, or I, we follow each other, so I know that that's not true, right? So how do you balance being a, a wife and a mom and, and all this other stuff? Um, I will start by saying um, balance is a myth, right? <laughs> um, it's it's basically like a where you get, you know, I believe in the power of one right? You can only focus your attention on one thing at a time, but you can do it really quickly, right? So I try my best that when I'm being a mom, I try and ignore everything else. Or when I'm being a realtor, I'm ignoring everything else. Or when I'm being a wife, it's like when you're trying to give a little bit to everything at the same time, you're mediocre at everything, right? Yeah. So there are days where I feel like a bad mom. I'm just going to say it. Um, and there are days when I feel like I'm really crappy at my job. Um, but at the end of the day, holistically, I know that I'm going in the right direction. So I try, I get here for everybody is to just have, have grace with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't be so hard on yourself. Look, this life that we have is very short. I'm not going to go down the morbid rabbit hole, but we are on rented time. We don't know how much time we have um, and you have to make the best of it. So I'm, I'm really all about um, maximizing my time as best as I can and not beating myself up um, because a lot of times people have a misconception that like, oh gosh, I must be on social media all the time, yeah. right? That's simply not true. Um, and look, look, I, 
I know there are some people out there who are stay at home moms and they love it. I just know that I would probably lose my mind. Like I love my children, but I can't be that all the time. And I also wouldn't want to be just a career woman. Like I'm a woman with a career who also has a family. Um, and I really love my family dearly. And I, I really, I hope that everybody listening right now, whether you're a mom or a dad, that you know, you can, you can give and take, you know, there are going to be some days where you need to delegate more and maybe you put someone else on your team as the point person and you don't have to be the the point person on that deal because you know, it's baseball season, right? It's fall ball for the kids and you want to be at all the games and you don't want to miss one that you, you have to make these conscious choices in life um, and be okay with it because you cannot have it all. You can't balance it all. Um, Otherwise, you're going to end up disappointed. You can't have it all, at least not all at once, right? That's right. Just individually, little little bite pieces. I love it. Be present wherever you're at. Um, Final question, Taya, and I'm so grateful for your time. This has been magnificent. I know so many people are getting value from this um, for years to come, right? This is going to be heard and listened to, and people are going to thank you, reach out to you. So again, before I go to the final question, I just want want to encourage everybody here. If you found any value in this, give Taya some love on social media. Go find her. On Instagram and TikTok are her two favorite places. Go find her there. Also on YouTube, find Taya's Two Cents, watch it, learn from her what she's doing. And always, of course, remember that uh, when you're looking for a great agent to refer to out of the Los Angeles South Bay market, um, reach out to her. She's fantastic. Um, So final question here, Taya, is this. Um, You are a big thinker, right? You're expanding your possibilities as we speak. What do you, what do you do on a regular basis to continue to grow yourself, to continue to be a big thinker? That's the purpose of the show is help people to, to break through those glass ceilings and, and think bigger. So they go on to, to be of greater impact and create a better life. So talk to us about maybe something that you do that regularly grows you. Oh my God. I love this question. You surprised me. I did not know this was coming. Um, I am all about self-development. I love I love meditation. I love the book. The miracle morning was a really big, um, eye opener for me. Um, I, every time I'm feeling lost, I try and go back to that, which, um, the savers, which is like silence, affirmation, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. Um, you know, though, if you haven't read the miracle morning, you absolutely have to, um, I love audiobooks. Um, again, sometimes I'm really busy and I don't have time for it, but whenever I'm feeling like lackluster, I go back to any of these books. Um, Mel Robbins is one that she used to bug the hell out of me, probably because she was so confronting for me. Yeah. Um, but now I really do. I want to read her um, her high five book. I really want to read that. Um, and I really like, I try and, and surround myself with people who really uh, fill my cup. And even if that's, you know, a celebrity that provides really great value um, online, like Gary V, Mel Robbins, Tony Robbins, um, any of these people um, that, uh, how do you pronounce his name? Tom Bilyeu, or mm-hmm. uh, is that who it is for Impact mm-hmm. Theory? Yeah. Um, yeah. All of that content, it's like, it, sometimes if you're in a dark place, it it lands flat because you're like, oh, I'm not really in the mood for this woo-woo BS um, and you need time to just feel your feelings. Um, but I really do believe that we have the power within ourselves to get out of whatever rut that we're in. And quite frankly, you're the only person who can get yourself out of that rut. Um, No one else can do it for you. You cannot outsource it. Um, You can go to therapy, but even then you are the one who has to get yourself out. And I have found that um, audiobooks are, are hands down one of the quickest ways that you can get present again. And I'm more than happy to share with you like my, my top five favorite list. That'd be great. If, if you wouldn't mind, maybe send that to me. If anybody wants it, reach out. In fact, what's the best way to get that? Is it to DM you on Yeah, DM um, me on Instagram. Instagram. Um, I can tell you right now, just some of okay. them. Um, uh, the Power of Habit. Okay. Um, the Power of Habit, The Miracle Morning, um, Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. Um, there's one, here, I'm gonna, can I pull it up right now? Do we have time for that? Yeah, we totally do. Okay. This is your show, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> we're on your time. We're on we're on Taya time. Um, let's see. Atomic Habits. Okay. 
Um, these are just like random ones, but outli and I'm going to give you more than five. Um, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, The Tipping Point mm -hmm. by Malcolm Gladwell. These are older, but like amazing. Mm -hmm. Classics. Um, the Alter Ego Effect by Todd Herman. Oh, good. Um, uh, wait, 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 what is it? Oh, there's one more. Oh, Can't Hurt Me. Mm. That one's dark, but that's a good one. It's <laughs> good. Um, <laughs> but Daring Greatly uh, was one of the most important books in my life. Um, in 2015, I went through just horrific trauma and that book just, it dug me out. Hmm. Daring I, Greatly. I actually, I actually haven't, of all the ones that you said there, I was like, read it, read it, read it. I have not read Daring Greatly. That one actually oh my God. It. It's awesome. It's really, really great. Um, and you know, there are some other books out there that people really enjoyed that mm -hmm. I listened to anyway, that they didn't really resonate for me, but those are the books that I would read again in a heartbeat, mm -hmm. uh, daring greatly and the power of habit are two of my all time favorite books that I would actually read again. Tell you, this has been, um, so value packed, like so value packed. Uh, I just want to thank you. Uh, I can see Aww. why your audience loves you. Um, and, uh, it's such a, such a pleasure to be connected. I'm, I'm excited to, to, to now call you a friend and yeah. a part of the Think Bigger community. It's such a pleasure. So appreciate you uh, very much. Look forward to staying in contact. And to everybody listening here today, um, Taya has shown us what it looks like to be a big thinker. It's time we get out of our own way. These three final words are my charge and my invitation to you. And they are go think bigger. Taya, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you.